Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Going to take a quick look at Alibaba's WAC. Going to put out a DCF valuation in the coming days on the, on them as well. But I'd like to start with the WAC video, just to kind of um, get familiar with the financials. It gets me looking through the company stuff. So quickly highlight what we have here. So first thing, market value of equity, and this is all in USD. So this comes from, looks like it's actually down slightly from when I put this together a few minutes ago. Um, so 626 billion market value of debt 11.45 billion so i have a debt schedule that i built out if you actually go through their um, 20f filing there's a lot of appendixes and different schedules but they do give us a schedule of all their current outstanding debt it doesn't quite tie 100 percent to their balance sheet so you'll see here it's like 11.45 billion their balance sheet shows i want to say like 11.6 billion um, but it, it's close enough, I think, and they give us the percentage. So it gets us, you know, in the general direction of where we need to go. And then we calculate the interest rate for all of the debt outstanding. Next thing, um, so that gets us cost of debt, cost of equity. This is using CAPM. So first off, treasury yield. There's a link here. Just look up the most recent treasury yields. And just as a note, I've centered this around as like a U.S. investor, right? So in reality, I think CAPM is like your you're looking at kind of like your best alternative kind of to price and equity. And I know they're a Chinese company, so you could try to look at maybe there's um, like the Chinese risk-free rate or a Chinese market index return. But I'm looking at this through the lens of a US based investor that if you're not investing in Alibaba, you would be going for some other company that's probably more likely than not in the US. Um, so you went with the US treasury yield as a risk-free rate as a US based investor. And you could argue that that's probably just like a good general risk-free rate for globally. Um, expected return of the market. This is for the S&P 500. I've said it at 8%. That's a historical S&P 500 return since there's been 500 companies in it. Link here for Investopedia. And then the beta is the last piece to calculate here. If you've never calculated beta, super straightforward. Uh, head on over to Yahoo Finance, type in your company. So here, Alibaba, once you have them pulled up, you're gonna hit historical data, you're gonna do five years, and then you're gonna do monthly returns. You're gonna hit apply, you're gonna hit download. It's gonna download an Excel file. In that file, there'll be a column with the dates, and then there'll be a column with the adjusted close. You're gonna take the date column and the adjusted close column, and you're gonna paste them in here. So that's what I've done. And then you're gonna calculate the monthly percentage return which is a very straightforward formula. It's just current period divided by prior period minus one gets you the, the change right there. And then you're gonna do the same thing for the index that you're using as the comparison point. So for us, it's S&P 500. That's what we wanna calculate its beta against. So do the same thing with SPY. I'll show you real quick, just type in SPY. You're gonna hit historical data. Same thing, five years. Monthly, hit apply, download, paste that data in and then put the formula to calculate the return. Once you have all of that, what we're going to actually go ahead and do is calculate the variance of SPY. So super simple equals var F3 to F16. And you could actually do var.s. Um, that might give us a little bit different. So it's a sample, right? Not a whole population. And then covariance, we could do, I think there's a covariance.s as well. Let me see. Yep. We do the covariance.s as well. I don't think it's going to make a material difference, right? It went up to 0.81 instead of 0.8. Um, so the covariance and then the first part of your covariance formula is going to be the monthly return on your equity that you're looking at. And then the second argument will be the monthly return on the indexed index. And then you're going to divide those two into each other. Um, so I divided by H gets you a beta of 0.81. Once you have the beta, then you can go ahead and calculate the cost of equity here with cap M super simple formula. You can follow along risk-free rate plus beta times return to the market less the risk-free. So the market risk premium times your beta and then add back the risk-free gets you 6.9%. And then weighted average cost of capital. You could follow the formula here, but basically it's saying, what's the cost of your equity? How much equity do you have divided by your total capital stack? So the equity plus debt and then times that by the percentage of the cost of equity and then debt times this divided by the total cap capital stack, right? And then you add those together and you end up um, with WAC. And there's a little bit of a tax shield, I should note, for market value of debt. So if you look at the formula, you'll see the end here, C5 times one minus C7. So in theory, um, whatever interest you pay is tax deductible in the sense that you're not gonna pay tax on it. So you get a little bit of a tax shield. 
And for their corporate tax rate, I actually pulled this from PwC article. Uh, they actually, for, you know, and you might be able to argue that it's 15%, but corporate tax income in China is 25%, but 15% for some new high tech enterprises. So I don't know if they're classified as that. Either way, it honestly does not make a difference because they have so little debt. But that gives us a weighted average cost of capital of 6.8%. If you're doing this on your own and you're you know, not sure if you're doing beta right, you can always sanity check it if you go back to Yahoo Finance or if you don't want to calculate beta yourself, um, that's fine as well. They will give you a five-year monthly beta of 0.82 and you can see we calculated 0.81. Um, so it could be you know, just slight difference there. Not entirely sure what it is, but you're in the ballpark. The problem... Sometimes you'll have to calculate this self. Um, Yahoo Finance doesn't always have everything. So if we go to like Palantir, they are not going to give us a beta because Palantir has not been public for five years. Now you could calculate a Palantir beta um, doing weekly or daily, but obviously a five-year monthly is going to give you a pretty good historical trend, uh, a lot of data points to really use. So you can always calculate betas yourself on shorter periods, but obviously not as um, good from that standpoint. But anyways, Hope you found this useful and helpful, but that's our WAC 6.8%. So when we build out the DCF Alibaba, we'll throw in the 